Yes. Welcome to the talk on the history of Halloween and Samhain. Um, most cultures have a festival of ancestors and the dead, which also has a dual function of dealing with the uncanny spirits and otherworldly beings and people with a foot in both worlds, such as witches and shamans. So Halloween was originally a festival of the dead with its roots in Samhain, the ancient Celtic festival. Okay, so Samhain is a Gaelic festival marking the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter or the darker half of the year. It was widely observed throughout Ireland, Scotland and the Isle of Man where it's spelled Samhain. So, so they're all pronounced Samhain or Samhain. Um, it's believed to have Celtic pagan origins and some Neolithic passage tombs in Ireland are aligned with the sunrise at the time of Samhain. It's first mentioned in the earliest Irish literature from the 9th century and is associated with many important events in Irish mythology. The early literature says that Samhain was marked by great gatherings and feasts and was when the ancient burial mounds were open and those burial mounds were seen as portals to the other world. So a similar festival was held by the Britonic Celtic people and it was called Calan Gaeaf in Wales and Calan Gwav in Cornwall and Calan Gawang in Brittany. And it involved bobbing for apples, divination and turnip lanterns. So bobbing for apples is where you have a row of apples suspended from a string and you have to try and get hold of them with your teeth uh, without touching them with your hands. And the other version is where you have a big tub of water and you stick again not allowed to use your hands so you stick your head in the tub of water and try to get hold of the apples with your teeth uh, and it's great fun um, and you normally end up with your head somewhere near the bottom of the tub of water okay so all saints day which is the origin of the christian version of halloween um, is also known as all hallows day the feast of all saints the feast of all hallows the Solemnity of All Saints and Hallowmas. Um, and it's celebrated in honour of all the saints of the church, known or unknown. From the fourth century, feasts commemorating all Christian martyrs were held in various places on various dates near Easter and Pentecost, uh, which is in the first half of the year. In the ninth century, some churches in the British Isles began holding the commemoration of All Saints on the 1st of November. And in the ninth century, this was extended to the whole Catholic Church by Pope Gregory IV. In Western Christianity, it's still celebrated on the 1st of November by Roman Catholics, as well as many Protestant churches. But the Eastern Orthodox Church um, and its associated services, uh, ch associated churches celebrate it on the first Sunday after Pentecost. Then we have All Souls Day. Um, also known as the commemoration of the faithful departed and the day of the dead. And this is where we get the Latine celebrations of um, day of the dead from. Uh, and it's a day of prayer and re remembrance for the faithful departed, which is observed by Roman Catholics and other Christian denom denominations annually on the 2nd of November. Uh, it's often celebrated in Western Christianity and Sat Saturday of Souls is a related tradition more frequently observed in Eastern Christianity. Adherents of all Sol Souls Day traditions often remember deceased friends and relatives in various ways on the day. People pray for the dead, give alms and visit cemeteries. Beliefs and practices associated with All Souls Day can vary widely among different Christian denominations. Okay, so All Hallows is another name for All Souls and the root of the word Halloween, the evening before All Hallows, so Hallow evening. Um, all Hallow Tide encompasses all three days of the festival, All Hallows Eve, All Hallows Day and All Souls Day, so the 31st through to the 2nd of November. Then we have Allentide, which is celebrated in Cornwall, 
And this is called that because it's not actually related to the word hallow. It's because of Saint Alan, uh, who was a bishop of Campere, which I think is in Brittany, in the sixth century. And that has similar customs to All Saints Day. So here we have the, um, the suspended on string version of apple bobbing. And you can just imagine trying to get these with your teeth. And then obviously that would probably wobble the wood around and you'd end up with wax dribbled on your head. So um, great fun for all the family. Okay, then we have Halloween in England, and there are many different customs um, from one region to the next in England. And here we have some people doing apple bobbing, um, or also known as apple ducking or apple ducking. And you can see that this person has managed to get an apple in their teeth, um, so without using their hands. So, and there were lots of other different uh, customs for English Halloween, like divine doing divination to see if you could find how who your true love would be. And um, one of those was that you have a, a shovel um, with two hazelnuts on it. And one of the hazelnuts is you and the other one is your true love. And so you wanna find out if some a particular person is your true love so you put them the hazelnuts on the shovel in the fire if the hazelnuts both leap off in opposite directions then you're not going to be in luck with that person so there were many different um, divination customs that you could do okay, in scotland they have guising and uh, here we have some, uh, so this is the origin of dressing up for Halloween that we know in know and love in North America, right? Um, and as you can see, people got very creative with their traditional guising costumes. Um, so the main purpose of this custom was going to your neighbor's houses to beg for drink, food or money. And many holidays in the traditional calendar had these kind of begging customs associated with them. Um, because it was a great way to get fed before welfare payments were widely available. And the psychological function of guising is to allow us to make light of our subconscious fears. Um, although I think if I met one of these on a dark night, I'd probably run screaming the other way. So, Okay, then we have soul cakes and um, also known as a soul mass cake. This is a shortbread biscuit or cookie with sweet spices, which is traditionally made for Halloween, All Saints Day and All Souls Day um, to commemorate the dead. The cakes are given out to soulers who are mainly children and the poor who go from door to door during the days of All Hallows, singing and saying prayers for the souls of the dead. The practice in England dates to the medieval period and was continued there until the 1930s in Sheffield and Cheshire and the custom has continued into modern times. Uh, also found in Scotland, Italy, and now I can't remember what that flag is. <laughs> um, Portugal. Portugal. Portugal, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, very widespread custom. And here we have some people going souling in medieval period with um, obviously Doing, doing a bit of guising as well. Okay, then we have Mischief Night, um, which is another source of trick-or-treating. Um, and um, trick, so Mischief Night is usually the 30th of October. And as you can see, um, the idea is to go around and do relatively harmless pranks around the town during the night and there are so many different names for mischief night that I couldn't fit them all on the slide so I just use mischief night as the um as a catch-all term for this um as you can see these naughty children have put for sales gathered up all the for sale signs in the neighborhood and put them on someone's lawn and then here we've got uh, a garden gate hung on a lamppost so good job uh, and it was found, this custom was found in 
the UK, the US and Canada. Okay, next up we have um, Halloween in North America. So as far as I have observed, the chief difference between North American Halloween and British Halloween is that in North America, you can dress up as any character from a movie. Um, and people have also been known to dress up as people from other cultures. Um, this is not recommended because other people's cultures are not a costume. Um, in the UK, we still do the thing of we only dress up as spooky things. So ghosts, pumpkins, witches, whatever, uh, zombies, vampires, anything spooky goes, but not the more general spread of things that you get in North America. Um, okay. So trick or treating is derived from the Scottish customs of guising and souling and the more widespread uh, custom of souling and also I think mischief night. Um, in recent decades, it's been re-imported from the US back into the UK. So um, in Scotland, they still prefer to call it guising. Then we have our uniquely weird British thing, um, which is bonfire night, uh, which is not really related to Halloween, um, but it is near Halloween, so I thought I'd include it. Um, it commemorates the thwarting of the gunpowder plot in the 60, in 1605, I think it was. Um, Guy Fawkes, also known as the last man to enter Parliament with honest intentions, uh, and his co-conspirators stashed barrels in the cellars of the Houses of Parliament to blow them up. The day is commemorated with fireworks, bonfires and burning effigies of Guy Fawkes. Um, thankfully, this aspect of the festival has been become less popular in recent decades because um, it's a bit gruesome. Um, also, major source of fear for cats because the people let off fireworks in their back gardens for weeks on end around the festival and, and it upsets the cats. So then we have uh, Remembrance Sunday. Um, this is a day again, very near, South, very near Halloween. Um, and it's to commemorate the contribution of British and Commonwealth military and civilian servicemen and women in the two world wars and later conflicts. Um, and it's held uh, on the Sunday nearest the 11th of November, which was the end of the first world war. Um, so I just thought that it's, it's interesting that it ended up being on that date because it kind of forms a season of the dead of the commemoration of the dead. And uh, there's the queen at the grave of the unknown warrior. Then we have Dia de los Muertos, um, or Day of the Dead. Um, and it is a holiday traditionally celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. It largely originated in Mexico where it's mostly observed but also in other places, especially by people of Mexican heritage. It's a much less solemn tone than All Souls Day, and it's portrayed as a holiday of joyful celebration rather than mourning. The multi-day holiday involves family and friends gathering to pay respects and to remember friends and family who have died. Traditions connected with the holiday include honoring the dead using calaveras and Aztec marigold flowers known as camp building home altars called ofrendas with the favorite foods and beverages of the dead and visiting graves with these items as gifts. The celebration is not solely focused on the dead as it's common to give friend gifts to friends such as candy sugar skulls and to share traditional pandemueto with family and friends and to write light-hearted verses uh, in the form of mock epitaphs dedicated to your living friends and acquaintances and this literary form is known as Calaveras Literarius. So a linked tradition with that is uh, Santa Muerte. Um, her full title is Nuestra Señora de la Santa Muerte, uh, Spanish for Our Lady of Holy Death. And 
She is a cult image female deity and folk saint in folk Catholicism and Mexican neo-paganism. She's a personification of death and is associated with healing, protection and safe delivery to the afterlife. Despite condemnation by leaders of the Catholic Church, her following has become increasingly prominent in the 21st century. She's also revered as a saint and protector of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer communities, especially in Mexico. Many LGBTQ people ask her for protection from violence, hatred, disease, and to help them in their search for love. Her intercession is commonly invoked in same-sex marriage ceremonies performed in Mexico, and the Iglesia Católica Tradicional Mexico Estados Unidos, uh, which is also known as the Church of Santa Muerte, recognizes gay marriage and performs religious wedding ceremonies for same-sex couples. So um, you may guess that that is leading us neatly into the queer connotations of Halloween. So Halloween itself is seen as an especially LGBTQ friendly holiday. This is partly because in the past it was illegal in many cities in the USA to wear more than three items of clothing associated with a different gender. But these restrictions were blurred at Halloween when you could dress as someone different. Many gay clubs hold Halloween celebrations. In Australia, a horror character, the Babadook, this is the Babadook here, um, has come to be associated with queerness due to his ability to disrupt ordinary life. And there's lots of academic analysis and articles online that you can find about why the Babadook is a queer icon. And this is a fan illustration um, with suitable outfit. Okay, then we have secular Halloween. Um, and for me, the really neat thing about secular Halloween is that occasionally the stuff you can buy at Michael's and Dollarama is actually relevant to the pagan celebration of Samhain, which is great. Um, lots of crows and cool stuff. Okay, so in paganism and polytheism, the celebration of Samhain is an opportunity to connect with our ancestors and beloved dead. And we also value the opportunity to confront our fears. Many of us tend to view the secular celebration of Halloween as a completely different holiday. And it is sometimes uncomfortable as a Wiccan to see my religion turned into a costume. So this is a polytheist altar um, for the celebration of Samhain. So to put Samhain in context with other pagan festivals, um, it's part of a full Wheel of the Year. Um, you can start the Wheel of the Year whenever you like. I, I quite like starting it at, in bulk um, on February the 1st. And then it moves around to Spring Equinox, Beltane, Summer Solstice, Lammas, Autumn Equinox, and then Samhain, and then back to Yule or the Winter Solstice. So the interesting thing is that Samhain sits opposite Beltane on the Wheel of the Year, and Beltane is a festival of life and sexuality, so it makes a good contrast with Samhain as a festival of death and the ancestors. And also fun fact, monarch butterflies arrive in Mexico around Dia de Muertos, um, the Day of the Dead, uh, where they're associated with the festival, and they return to Canada around Beltane or May Day. So there's actually a nice link across the Wheel of the Year um, in North America there. And if you want to find out more, um, I recommend, uh, well, I've, I found this one on the internet, so I haven't read it myself, but um, I, it seems to be about Latino traditions. Um, this one's good, and a new edition of it is just about to come out the Castle's Encyclopedia of Queer Myth, Symbol and Spirit, and The Stations of the Sun by Ronald Hutton, which is an extremely comprehensive guide to all things folk festival and, um, and seasonal festivals. So um, um, I do recommend buying the hardback because the print's bigger. Um, so that's it. 
uh, any questions. And I'm just, before we start the questions, I'm just going to stop recording. <laughs>